Hey guys, Agnard here. Hope you and your family are doing well. I just got through putting out hay for uh, for the cow cows, and uh, made me start thinking about um, kind of how I figure how much hay um, to get for uh, for my cows to get through the winter. And uh, so I'm gonna share a little bit, talk to you about hay, um, and uh, and then we'll talk about what how I figure how much hay I need for the for the uh, for the year so just want to start with right off the bat not all hay is um, created equal and um, you know right off hays are different there's different varieties of grasses and then there's different qualities of said varieties so we typically feed coastal Bermuda and uh, we uh, <clears throat> we try to do a little something to our to our fields, to our hay meadows. Uh, not saying it's always a lot or it's enough, but we try to do a little something to uh, to have a good protein content and uh, to have good clean hay and, and minimal minimal weeds. But uh, but as I as I alluded to, not all hays are created equal, and and so um, you're going to pay for protein one way or the other. Uh, you're either going to pay for fertilizer to go into your uh, hay to get you good protein uh, you're gonna uh, feed that hay and uh, you know your animals are gonna do well if it doesn't have a good protein content you're gonna have to pay to supplement it uh, you're gonna have to pay to uh, a either uh, add alfalfa or uh, a protein tub or or cubes or lick tub or whatever it may be uh, we uh, uh, and then if you don't do um, if you don't do any of that if you don't have good quality hay or if you don't supplement that mama cow is going to suffer and she a may not breed back or she may have a calf and it might be well under the desired birth weight um, or it might it might have problems it, that that uh, baby calf may not have uh, may not make it so uh, so right off the bat not all uh, hays are created equal so make sure that you're feeding good quality hay. Uh, you know, on average, you're going to, um, a, a, a mama cow is going to eat, you know, 25 to 30 pounds of, of roughage a day. And that's whether it's winter, summer, or whatever it may be. That's just the requirements of, of what a, a mama cow is going to eat. Uh, you know, and, and once again, it'll vary on, on the quality of hay. You also want to know that there's other things that, that animals need to eat. I've talked about, uh, adding, uh, uh, protein um, and so we we like to offer free range hay with our with our cow cows um, every uh, every day all day free range hay uh, like to have free range protein tub free range water free range mineral and those are all kinds of things that that we do uh, know that that there is some some formulas that that are um, alluded to that uh, you know, we've talked about a little bit uh, in the past about Pearson Square. It's an exact science. We know how much we know how much that mama cow is going to eat. Um, we know how much she's going to need a day. Uh, how, how much other feedstuffs are going to be needed? Uh, I'm trying to walk out of the wind. It's on cue. I'm telling you, I need a windmill uh, and just make videos all the time because I would be rich. But um, but it. it we know all the makeups of what hay is. We know what the makeups of uh, feed stuff are, uh, chopped corn, soybean meal, whatever it may be. And you put it in this formula, it's called Pearson Square, and it'll tell you exactly uh, how much you need of what you need. And so uh, I, I recommend you, you look at it. Um, it's, it's, it's not terribly complicated, uh, but there is some process. You'll need some good reference material. Um, you know, you can get what uh, different feedstuffs are made out of or what their makeup is. Um, you know, the different amount of protein, the amount of fiber, uh, total digestible nutrients, all those different things. You can find that in, um, in good reference material. There's a, a book that I use that, that I, uh, I rely on quite a bit. It has a lot of good things. Maybe I'll do a video on that someday. Uh, you can also find literature from your... Um, your um, land um, land bank schools, Texas A&M has here in Texas, uh, I'm in East Texas, Tyler, Texas, um, 
Texas A&M has great literature on a multitude of things um, that that uh, you know that they want to help uh, farmers and ranchers and homesteaders um, be productive. And so, uh, so that's some consideration. Some other consideration is um, you know depending on where you live, you're going to need to know uh, um, you know your dormancy, how long your winters are. Um, obviously, fall lasts much longer here in Texas, which is, you know, the southern part of the, of the nation, versus Washington State or Rhode Island. They're going to have shorter um, uh, summers. And uh, so what I'm trying to say is, you know, our feed, feed um, range is uh, feeding hay is much more narrower than, than others. And uh, so some other things to consider is if you, if you supplement with uh, winter grass, you know, we like to put out um, a good uh, uh, rye grass and clover and wheat and all those different things and it reseeds on our place every year and and so we're pretty proud of that um, and so that supplements uh, what we do so those are all just some things for you to consider on what you're going to do when uh, you're trying to determine how much hay you need uh, for each year and uh, I uh, here on our place um, we uh, we get uh, I, I, I plan on four to five round bales per year per animal. As I said, not all hay is created equal and not all hay is the same size round bale. Uh, so we, we feed a four by five round bale. Uh, we just um, got our little used round baler last year and we were belling it at 58 inches. So that's a couple of inches shy of 60, which is, which is um, you know, five foot. So not all hay is created equal and not all round bells are the same so that's what we do here on our little farm i hope that helps you out god bless you and your family uh, like subscribe comment if you have any questions let me know agnard out